Hey guys, so now hopefully you understand the basics of MATLAB if you haven't already. Um, so what we're going to do now is show you, so this command window is great if you just want to prototype a little bit of code uh, or a section of code or just want to do some very basic things. However, if you want to constantly use it and re use it for repeatability or just keep repeating the same section of code, you want to create something what's, which is called a script, uh, which allows you to write up a, a piece of code and then you can run it and basically it'll spit out the answer for you or whatever it, whatever you're trying to get. Um, and then basically if it's not quite right, you can easily go change the section of code or change a variable to be a different number, etc. Okay, so to do that, you want to go into this editor. If that's not there, you simply go File, New, and go Script. Okay. Now, what you'll also want to do is you want to go File, Save it, Save it straight away. So, save it to wherever you're saving it. Um, with script files, they have to be a single name. There can't be any spaces or anything. So if you want a space, just use an underscore. Okay. Uh, then you'll also want to go change the directory of the folder. Otherwise, it won't run properly. So basically, then you've got to go find wherever you put it again. So in my case, my documents. And either you can choose, so I'm going to choose that one there. And you notice that this has now changed to the current folder. Um, you can also, you can also do it from over here. Okay. So we might go up here and you can easily right click on it and you can go add to path, selected folders and subfolders or just a selected folder. So I'm going to go right click on part two, add to path, selected folders. Okay. And so you see, notice now that is a um, bright, it's now not shadowy. Okay, so to get started in this script, we're going to basically write a simple sum, uh, a script to simply sum some numbers between two given. Okay, so to do that, let's say, let's declare two variables to be our two initial numbers, our starting number and our ending number. So let's say a is equal to three semicolon to turn off that echo b equals 5 so hopefully you understand that what's going on there okay you'll also we're going to now use an if statement so hopefully you know what an if statement does if not basically it is you go if some statement is true then do the following section of code uh, so say for example if a is a is less than b Okay, then basically the code that you want. So now we'll have a vector. So we'll just call it, um, let's just call it, let's just call it vector. Okay, will be equal to a, I'll explain what this code is doing in a second. Okay, so we're declaring a variable called vec. And basically we're saying it's equal to a. Okay, so start at a. Because that's going to be the lower number, obviously, with our if statement. If our if statement is true, A will be the lower number. If A is less than B, to create this variable that starts at A, colon, goes up every one. So if A is 3, it will then the next number in the vector will become 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, until it reaches B. Okay? Okay, so that's the first one. But... There's also a few other statements. Basically, if B would be, if B is greater than A, then you'll want to start at B, going up in increments of 1 to A. Okay. Else, if A equals B, you just want to say that your vector is 0. Okay. And then you put an ending statement. Okay, so you notice this, you've got an if statement. If this one's true, do this. Else if this one is true, do this. Else if this one is true, do this. And then you've got your final end statement. Okay, and you notice that these two things un underline each other. So if to your end. 
Okay, also in here, just be aware in coding, um, if you do this statement, a equals b, you're actually saying that a is equal to the value of b, but when you're doing a test statement, like an if or a while statement, you basically want to go a equal, you want to check to see if a equals b, and that's what this double equal sign does. It goes if a is equal to b, not it doesn't assign a to be the value of b. Just watch out for that. Okay, and then basically... That will create a vector, um, however, however long, depending on these values here. Okay. And then, so we'll, we'll want to know the length of that vector. Okay. So MATLAB has a few inbuilt functions, which I'll explain how you can use later on. But for now, just bear with me. So we're going to declare a variable n to represent the length of the vector. And we're going to use this function, which is inbuilt into MATLAB to tell us the length of that vector. So n equals the length of that vector, that variable that we've just created. And then we want to say, we're going to firstly initialize the sum. We're going to say that's equal to zero. The reason I do this is just to make sure that we know that it's going to be starting at zero before we start sum summation. Okay, so now we're going to use something called a for loop. Uh, basically, it will just keep going until uh, from an initial statement until the end statement is reached. So basically just a big loop. So I like to use ii for my loop counters. So you're going to say for ii equal to 1 up to n is how I'm going to do it. So basically this is saying uh, for ii being equal to 1 and going up to the length of n, so going up to n. So say n was 2, it would go, okay, ii equals 1, go through once, and then it would increase the counter up to two, it would increase the counter by one, so it would go up to two, and it basically would go through again. And then basically, while ii is less than n, it's going to keep going through that, that loop loop code that we're about to write. So in this case, the loop code that we're going to write is go we're going to write sum equals sum plus vec ii. Okay, now I'll explain what this code does in a second. Hold up. And then we're going to have end. Okay, so what this code doing here is basically we're saying, it can, I know mathematically this kind of possibly doesn't make sense, but really in code what it's doing is it's saying, okay, so we've got our sum variable which is back up here and it's saying take the last value or the previous value of sum, so the one from the previous loop or here if it hasn't looped around, and say plus uh, the ith, the nth, well ith element of the vector. So basically, for the first loop, it would come through, 